Hey guys, it's Stacy Loves Paper here, and I have a quick and easy Easter card to show you, but at the end I do show you how you can turn this into any other card you want. So we're starting out, and I'm going to use Stampin' Up! ink pads just to show you can get very similar results to Distress Inks if you don't happen to have those. So I'm starting out, I got Pink Purette, Pumpkin Pie, Daffodil Delight, Pear Pizzazz, Pool Party, and Marina Mist. And these are, almost all of them are from the Stuttles collection. Uh, the pumpkin pie is not, but I did not have the orange in that collection. <laughs> and I'm also using some watercolor paper here. This is just the Canson XL watercolor paper. I just cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have the My Favorite Thing Mini Cloud Stencil. And I'm you, making this card without actually having an Easter specific set. So I'm just using stuff I had on hand to make some Easter cards. So I'm starting out with a blending tool. And I find I get the best blend when I ink up the little pad with as much ink as it will hold. So on the right you see I've got a new pad and the left is the inked up pad. I sped up the video here just because it's not very interesting to watch me ink blend all these colors. But anyway, so I'm adding some more ink. I got my stencil and I'm just holding the stencil in place. This one's easy to line up. So I'm starting, I'm just using the very edge of my foam to get color almost all the way to the top. So I have a really light gradient. And then I'm going in with my foam against the paper and making it a little darker right against the edge of the stencil so you can really get the cloud outline. And I just rotate the stencil, move it down, and start with my next color which will be the orange and you can also move the stencil a little to the right a little to the left to get a different cloud formation however you want to do it so again I'm gonna ink up my foam really well go in with the edge of my foam just to get the color almost all the way to the previous color and then go in with a darker blend and I'm gonna do that for all of the colors and now these the Stampin' Up! inks are blending very well. I don't really notice the difference between those and the Distress inks as far as blending ability. And of course the water paper, watercolor paper makes it much easier to blend these inks out. However at the end I will show you a card where I did blend these all on some Nina Solar White and I did get a pretty good blend there too. Now I have the yellow, the Daffodil Delight, again doing the same exact thing as I did before. So if you don't have Distress inks and you don't want to invest, you can use Stampin' Up! inks if you have those. You can use, you can try out any other water-based dye ink to see if you get similar results. So here I have the green. Again, I'm inking up the foam really well, etc., etc. Same thing over and over. And you just go all the way down to the bottom of the card. Now with my Stampin' Up! inks, I've had these since I started stamping, so some of my ink pads are quite old. Uh, you can re-ink them. Now this particular Pool Party ink is my only newer ink pad I'm using right now. And Stampin' Up! used to have felt pads, and now the new ones are a thick foam. So you will get a bit more ink onto your foam pad a bit easier than you do with the felt pads, but it's not a noticeable difference, so if you have the old ink pads, they'll work just as well as the new ones, and vice versa. If you have a new ink pad, go ahead and use those. See, right there, I had to move my stencil. Again, that stencil is super easy to line up. So, pool party. And then for the very bottom of the card, you don't need the stencil. Oh, there, I missed a little spot, so you just go in with the edge of your pad and go blend out the ink a little bit more. And then for the like I said, the very edge of my card base, I'm just using the Marina Mist just to fill in some color at the bottom. I will be cutting this with a die cut so you won't get all of that color so it doesn't really make a difference how much you blend that at the bottom because I will be cutting it off. So there's my blended background. Now I'm going to add, I make my own pearl mist using some perfect pearl powder with some water in a Stampin' Up! spray bottle. And I just take out the whole thing there and just sprinkle some bigger droplets onto my paper and then I'll go in with just some plain water and use my hand to get some more droplets of just plain water to get that distressed look and again as far as using these compared to distress inks myself personally I think they work almost as well as distress inks so again if you don't want to invest in those 
use what you have on hand, see if it works. So I let it sit on the paper, probably for about 20 seconds. You didn't see it, but I did clean off my glass mat there. And then I dabbed up all the excess water to get that nice distressed look. You get the droplets. You can see the paper underneath. And if you don't like the distressed look, then don't add the water. Now I'm using a My Favorite Thing cloud die. I'm going to use the two smaller clouds. And that's just so I have a place for my little critter to stand on so it doesn't look like it's floating in the air. I'm just going to cut that out using my Big Shot. And I do keep some tape on the top of the Big Shot handle there. You see when I have to tape a die cut or anything in place, it's there. And that's just where I store it because I can reuse those. There you go. I'm using the tape to pull out the die cut since there aren't any little holes to punch it out so it comes out quite easily and then I'm going to use a lawn fawn stitched rectangle die to cut out my background piece and that's how I store them in an Avery L stamp pocket I put the backer sheet in the back just so I know where it comes from and I do store the large and small set all in the same package and I'm using I believe the second biggest rectangle which might be the biggest rectangle in the smaller rectangle set then again I'm just gonna cut it out using my big shot I'm going to run it through again. I think I missed the corner. And then I use the magnetic base plate. I use a color plate for the bottom and then a clear plate for the top. And I use the color plates just so I can keep track of which plate's which because I cut into one plate over and over and over and keep the top plate clean. And then when the bottom plate's worn out, I switch. So I have the little cloud dies there, and I'm just going to add some pool party ink to the edges just to give them a little definition. I'm just using the same blending tool. I didn't re-ink it, just using whatever ink is left over. I'm going to do the same thing with a smaller one. So I'm sorry it took so long to get this video posted. Again, it's a last minute Easter card or you can use this to make a nice spring card. Happy birthday as you see at the end. Anything you want to do. I'm using the Mama Elephant Lunar Animal set just because they have a cute bunny in this set. And I do have the coordinating dies which I store in the back. I'm going to cut out some bunny shapes. I'm going to stamp them first. I'm using the My Favorite Things Extreme Black. It's alcohol marker friendly because I'm going to color my little bunny with some Copic markers. I got T1, R20, and then the colorless blender. You can use any colors you have, any markers, pencils, whatever you want to color. I'm just going to add a little bit of color to my bunnies and I'm not going to take any particular care. Just going to color them nice and quick. So I'm just going to stamp them all out on one piece of Nina Solar White card. And that My Favorite Things ink stamps very well the first time. But I am going to show you I do have Memento Tuxedo Black if you wanted to see the difference. Now my Tuxedo Black ink pad I did re-ink recently. So it does give a darker impression than when I hadn't re-inked it. So if you do want to just get a re-inker, you'll get a nice black outline without having to double stamp. However, if you have the My Favorite Things alcohol ink, go ahead and use that pad. Get the same results. Now when you stamp them all, if you stamp down your little bunnies here, you just make sure you leave enough space so you can die cut them. So that's stamped with a memento and the top row was stamped with the extreme black. And I couldn't tell any difference. And I'm just going to go on, like I said, with some quick Copic coloring. Just to get a little bit of color, a little bit of shading. This is just what I choose to do. You might be able to do a better job. 
I'm just using the T1, just it's a newer marker and I wanted to try it out. Any gray marker would work. I'm, like I said, I'm just adding shadows, so I want to keep my little bunny white, but just make him look like he's got a little bit of color on him. Or her. And I'm going to use the colorless blender just to soften out the edges. When you first put the, or when I first put the colorless blender down, I didn't notice how much it dries back. So if you let it sit for a few seconds, you'll see that you really, really pushes the color back. So just be careful there. And I'm using a Hero Arts stamp set, Celebrate Every Day. It's got a bunch of celebration messages. I'm just using the Happy Easter out of that set. And I'm going to stamp it onto vellum. I'm just going to cut it down. And this is just some vellum I had in my stash. I believe it was by stamping up. It's a very thin, transparent vellum. Any vellum would work if you choose to use that. Or you can stamp directly on your card base. I like to leave my strip a little bit longer than the card. That way I can move it around and attach it to the back. So I'm just using a powder bag so I don't have any static, so my embossing powder doesn't stick. Using some Versamark ink, I'm going to stamp the Happy Easter sentiment down towards the right-hand side. And I'm going to emboss it with Ranger Super Fine Detail Gold embossing powder. I'm going to heat set it with my heat tool. Make sure you let your heat tool warm up a bit. Since it is vellum, it can warp pretty easily. As you can see, once your heat tool is hot, the vellum will melt real, or the embossing powder will melt very quickly on the vellum. I'm just going to line it up, try and get it straight on my card base, and then I attach the vellum to the back of the card, just using some tape runner. And I'm just using my grid there to try and line it up as straight as I can. I'm just going to take my little cloud die and attach it there on the vellum. Let it hang off the edge of the card. And I did use a little action wobbler on my bunny. I didn't use it on all my cards, just a couple that were going to some kids. So they can have a fun time playing around. Though, who's kidding? We, we all love to play around with the little action wobblers because they are so cute. And that's just the card base it's going to attach to. However, I am going to attach that before I attach my bunny so I don't have the bulk. So I'm just adding some adhesive to the back of the card base and then I'll attach it to my card which is just made out of some Nina Solar White 110 pound cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have, I'll end up with a nice white border around my colored panel. I got my little bunny and I'm going to attach it to my cloud. And my card will be all set, ready to go. So there's a little action wobbler working. I did stamp a sentiment on the inside, however, I used a stamp that's no longer available, so I didn't want to link that for you. But you can use the same card, and I do have some other cards on my blog using Distress Ink. And those are the colors I like the best that are there, which I believe are white persimmon, and white persimmon, sponge sugar, mustard seed, peacock feathers, twisted citron, salty ocean, and then some of the ones at the very bottom I added in some purple, which was seedless preserves. So here's another card I made. Uh, this one I ink blended right on my Nina Solar White card base. 
If you have any questions, see my blog, stacylovespaper.wordpress.com. And thanks for watching.